What's going to happen when you want to realize that you're a fake hand? You're a fake hand. You're a fake hand. Who are you pretending that you're just a fake hand? Oh my god. Hey, that looks horribly trying to do it. You can't do anything. That's going to do it. You are worth nothing. Nothing. Good job, guys. Woo! Nice. And call Good word there. Got him. There you go, Pierre. I guess. I can't. You got the kill. It's time that we talk about this. Hey good folks, my name is Leith and I want to welcome you to my channel called Devs and Dice. Now this video is a bit special. Misunderstand me correctly, there will be painting, just not as usual. It's not a tutorial or step by step by any means per se. If I had to label it, then perhaps I would say that it's an introspection video. My thoughts about this year that has passed, some thoughts about the coming year, but primarily I'm going to be addressing some of my personal fears when it comes to the hobby and how I managed to overcome them and end up with this rather nice result. So as most of you know, I paint a lot of miniatures. But last year, I started also doing some terrain on the channel, which was really exciting and it got a nice reception from all of you wonderful folk out there. Now, of course, looking forwards, I want to continue to build terrain. And if I'm on, gonna be honest with myself, I almost feel like it comes more naturally to me than painting miniatures. I think sometimes that it's because I can more easily see the practical side of both sort of constructing or building the piece of terrain, but also its use on the tabletop. Well, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's a different beast in many ways, I'm sure. Now, as 2021 has started, I knew I was going to try to increase the amount of terrain builds I had on the channel. But there was something that bothered me, something that actually has been bothering me since my first proper terrain build when I did the Dwarven Fountain. In my terrain videos, I use these 28mm miniatures that are supposed to do a couple of things. First, to show the scale of the build, um, show the application, uh, but most of all, it's supposed to symbolize a party of adventurers. The miniatures I chose for this were some pre-painted miniatures from WizKids. And fair enough, they do get the point across, but I'm one of those persons that, well, I guess you would call me a goody two-shoes or try-hard, and using these minis just felt wrong. Now, of course, I tried looking for some, you know, player character miniatures that I had painted, and in that process, something became very, very clear to me. I don't paint a lot of player character miniatures at all, to be honest. Now, of course, one of the most obvious reasons for this would be that I usually get to, you know, mantle the role of a dungeon master. And there's generally a lot of monsters that play the part of a bad guy. Sure, I could buy into that argument. But being totally honest with myself, I knew that there was more. There was something else that stopped me from painting these specific kind of miniatures. Because, really, if I analyze it, it really didn't stop with just player character miniatures. It was all kind of, you know, small humanoids. Now, digging deep into myself and being <laughs> really honest with myself, I started to realize that painting these small miniatures came with a ton of expectations. Not expectations from you, but more 
from myself or from within. I don't know, I, I felt like I couldn't win. Now, growing up in the lovely Sweden as a child of the 80s, um, we didn't have a whole lot of entertainment on our government-funded uh, TV channels. But there was one type of program uh, that I always loved. Nature documentaries. Now, as a young boy starting to draw, I of course gravitated more towards drawing animals. I suppose a child draws what they see and what I saw, or at least what I paid attention to, was animals. Well, I guess you're wondering, why am I telling you this? Well, what I'm alluding to is that I've always felt like I have an easier time with drawing animals than humans. Now, fast forward to a couple of years ago, when I started this wonderful hobby, the first type of miniatures I got a hold of were miniatures from WizKids. The problem got worse when I sort of looked at these small uh, miniatures and the quality was so-so, but more so the aesthetic of these miniatures. The human kind again, or humanoid kind again. The proportions were very realistic, much more so than compared to miniatures from Reaper or from Games Workshop. The details in the sculpt were super small, and this combined with the sort of pre-priming and the mold lines, well, let's just say it didn't exactly inspire me. Even worse, I would say, it actually made me feel uncomfortable with painting sort of human size character miniatures. There are so many small details and I, I don't know, I, I just I just felt like pressure. It just, you know, removed the joy of painting for me. Now I'm sure I could have gone on for years and years and never painted a humanoid character miniature model. But I felt like it was time. One can only go so far with a fear. At some point, we all need to choose if we want to accept the fear or confront it. I didn't want this fear to control me. I didn't want to make another terrain build without having my own party present. I thought of my longing to play D&D with my friends. Thought of a long year with COVID. I also remembered somewhere in there that vaccines are starting to get distributed. There is a light at the end of this, you know, COVID tunnel. There are many things I hope for, like not having to worry about the, the people I love every day. But since this is a nerdy YouTube channel, my focus will uh, naturally sort of gravitate towards D&D &D and how I miss my friends. And I... I channeled that love and those memories uh, to overcome or to help me overcome my fear of painting character miniatures. Now, as luck would have it, my friendly local game store, Alpha Spiel, just started getting in some Reaper miniatures into their stock. Now, these miniatures caught my uh, eye instantly, but specifically so the Dungeon Delver series. These miniatures were of good quality and had a bit more of a old-school aesthetic that I liked. And the miniatures of my choice was an elven ranger, an old human wizard, a young rogue halfling, and a female fighter. This to me was a classic party, something which reminded me of my own D&D group, uh, whom I miss so much. The miniatures were metal miniatures, and the details were, I would say, at the right level in my opinion. I felt passionate about painting these miniatures, so I set out on my own adventure. Now, in the past, I've only dabbled with some basic non-metallic metal techniques, but this time around, I wanted to really go for it. I told myself that failure, or failure, was not a bad-looking miniature. Failure was to never try. Now, in my evenings of painting these miniatures, I focused on the painting as opposed to the video. So most of my shots are very bare bone and basic. And for this, I apologize. But I still wanted to tell you this story, how, well, how an insecure amateur painter overcame some of his fears by remembering the good times at the gaming table. 
And judging these miniatures today, of course there's plenty of room for improvement. There always is. But I have to give myself a break as well. I have to remind myself that the ambition of becoming a good painter should never compromise with the joy of painting. Sometimes it's good to be present and happy with what you have achieved. I love the result of these miniatures, perhaps mostly because they remind me of the glorious days of the past that hopefully will come again soon. For me, I will continue painting minis and crafting terrain, and these little adventurers will be with me every step of the way, and they will do until I can see my friends again. For you, my dear viewer, who expected a step-by-step -step tutorial, well, I, I guess if we are to extrapolate anything, the lesson in this one is a bit more broad. Remember the good times. Channel them. Let them give you strength, and once you're ready, and only then, you can confront your fear. Folks, thank you so much for listening to this um, personal chat, almost, or personal story. Do you have some fears or insecurities that affect your hobbying in some way? I, for myself, I'm happy that I confronted some of mine. But anyways, what did you think about the paint job? Please feel free to tell me, as always, in the comment section down below. And if you like the channel and you want to support it, there's a number of ways you can do so. Uh, like. Uh, or dislike actually this video, um, share it, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and finally you can join my Patreon. And on that note, I also want to thank my dear patrons for their support, and a special shout out to my warrior level patrons, Blake Crowell and Chris Grop. You guys are awesome. So with this, I want to thank you so much for watching, and I want to wish you an awesome day. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. Lots of love.